Welcome to the Total Connector Show. My name is Kevin Navani. My very special guest is Has McCook. Um, Has, thank you so much for your time, uh, for coming on my show. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing very well. Uh, looking, really looking forward to our chat. It was great to meet you in Riga. So, uh, so yeah, expect some, uh, expect some fireworks. <laughs> All right. Well, I really enjoyed our talk uh, in Riga and hope uh, we can, you know, meet up soon uh, personally because um, I have a bunch of questions uh, today, uh, starting today. Um, um, I listened to your last interview with um, uh, John Bells. Is it, that's his name, right? Yeah, on the, on the Rapid Fire podcast. Yeah, exactly. And with Anita Posh, amazing interviews, really in-depth, uh, but also really, what do you call it? Um, it was really um, understandable, you know, for for any for any person. It wasn't it wasn't like technical. Uh, it, it didn't go too much into detail. Uh, what I really love about you is that you work with, you know, we you said something very very important in 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 John's uh, interview. You said it's much more important, you know, to reach the 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 heart and the souls so some paraphrasing it something like that the hearts and the soul of the people in you know uh it's uh, it's that's much harder than to you know reach them on an intellectual or a mind level um where do you see where do you see this um where do you see the status quo of of the of the comprehension level of or reception level of people that you talk to or what's your, what's your observation? Because, you know, um, wh why we're doing all these interviews and podcasts, you know, and there's so much material on Twitter and, and articles that you also wrote yourself. Uh, that's, that's good. But uh, in order to reach, you know, the bigger, the much, much bigger masses of the, of humanity, um, I totally agree with you. We need to, you know, pick them up where they are, and that is on an you know on an emotional heart level. If you want, you know, what what are the needs, the desires of people? So uh, uh, the thing the thing about uh, you know Bitcoin and anything anything in life, uh, it's a it's an issue of horses for courses. So everybody's gonna gonna understand things in a different way, <clears throat> and it's effectively, you know, I've been. Uh, I've been talking about Bitcoin to anyone who would listen for the past five or six years. So, uh, so with time, you get a, you get a lot of practice and, uh, you get a feel, uh, for the points to really touch on. So whenever I, uh, I'm talking to a environmentalist, I always pull on the, you know, the environmental impact heartstrings, one of the, of the fiat system and consumerism and, uh, and two, uh, the distinction between energy and emissions. And as you can see uh, up on uh, up on your screen that you're sharing now, I've got a, a stack sats for, for salvation hashtag. And I'm sure we'll talk about uh, what salvation uh, means to, to, uh, to a, what it means broadly and differently to very different people. Right. So, Let's start off. Um, I read some of your articles, Has. Um, um, I didn't go through all of them because it was a little bit too much for me. It was, you know, too much, too many numbers, too much analysis. You know, but but I watched the videos that were attached to that. It was really great because you, you somehow you get a, uh, I get a, you know, really good comprehension of, uh, you know, about about this whole so-called, you know, uh, allegedly controversial topic about um, energy efficiency environmental uh, what it what does it cost so you have a pretty good um um i think it was even in the last part on you on your medium.com page uh at has mccook uh the last part in conclusion the cost uh, uh in the end uh, in the last part of it the cost and sustainability of bitcoin uh part 10 discussion and conclusion let me uh let me just show this uh just in case uh, for the YouTubers. Um, and what I really loved is the conclusion to, uh, part where you talk about, you know, what about the Bitcoin's growth and increasing energy demand? You want to like summarize a little bit uh, for, for our listeners and viewers? Yeah, look, this was, uh, <clears throat> this was a long time ago, written, uh, written in August, 2018. So, uh, so things uh, have changed quite a bit. 
but effectively it's uh, it's uh, it's pretty easy economics. Miners are always going to chase maximum profit, and uh, a big element of the of the profit picture in Bitcoin is electricity costs. So, you know, in the future, miners will keep chasing cheaper and cheaper electricity, and as the trends are showing, uh, the cheaper and cheaper electricity. Uh, are, are effectively renewable sources of energy. Uh, it's hard to predict what what will happen in terms of energy use uh, with Bitcoin, but I can see, like I can envisage a future, you know, in in 2050, where there's uh, decentralized nuclear power plants all over the place with uh, ASIC mining farms uh, plugged directly into them. Mm -hmm. Um. Let me let me ask you one uh, you know naive question. Do you think um, there's a lack of energy? Yes, mm -hmm. I do. I think uh, uh, for for civilization to continue advancing and to really make our our next great leap forward, uh, should we say, is uh, we probably need to be producing a hundred to a thousand times more energy than we're producing now. Sounds and, insane, uh, mm -hmm. but but everything, every single thing in the universe is just is just energy. I'm energy. Your energy. Uh, Bitcoin is the monetized representation of energy. Uh, so the more <laughs> the more the more energy we use, the 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 more we can produce. And yeah, it's not an issue of of energy uh, being being bad. It's emissions being bad. Uh, so if you can unlock a uh, high, high, high abundance of energy without uh, needing to pollute too much. Uh, I don't see what the issue is. All right. Um, but you're saying that, um, let me see, um, is that the, 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 the development or the evolution of our, of our technologies? Do you think it has been, or is it, is it progressing? Um, uh, do you see do you see a, a new future where we have um, I mean you talked about you know the the laws of third thermodynamics which uh, maybe could be uh, sort of more uh, relative or considered more relative or maybe even um, ha could be changed uh, the laws of third dynamics in the future with uh, with at much more advanced technologies and therefore we could produce uh, in vast quantities as you say you know much more much more energy um, with different technologies I mean I'm talking about you know beyond the nuclear and subnuclear technology um, yeah. do, do you see so, that so, so for me uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna claim to be a, a, a scientist here or a doctor, but I, uh, I follow the law and the law is the law. And I think uh, the, the new technology will just help us capture or rather transfer the energy, uh, uh, you know, transfer and capture the energy much more efficiently and, and reuse it. Uh, you know, energy, just like Bitcoin, uh, finite, but infinitely divisible. So we'll just, uh, uh, figure out better ways of uh, of you know transferring energy from the ether uh, and uh, putting it to good use. Great, great. Mm -hmm. um, has uh, do you think there is? Um, do you think we are doing enough to uh, we, uh, in the Bitcoin community to uh, to advance? The process of mass adoption, or, uh, or what, what? Where do you see? Uh, I know I asked this question last time we talked, but uh, maybe we can you maybe you can go into depth. Um, what are the obstacles um, in in getting? I mean, you, you, we repeat these these memes, you know, stack sats, you know, and but uh, and we are far away, you know, from real intuitive, user friendly, full node applications. Let alone the costs, uh, you know, which which are attached to that. If you want to have a plug and play full node device such as Casa, it's still I think that's that's one of my criticism because I I think um, the cost is really high for somebody you know who's you know uh, maybe getting a pension of maybe eight hundred or a thousand dollars a year per month to to afford themselves. Um, you know a full casa node uh but we are we, we don't you know let's not talk about full node just i'm talking about a hodling uh process uh 
do, where do you see the the status quo right now with with people coming on board newbies because that's that's one of my really uh, essential desires and wishes that more and more people you know come on board and and educate themselves and and understand why they're doing it in the first place so in in terms of the in terms of the why if you scroll all the way up that medium page i've effectively laid out the case uh so there we go. Spending in the sake of Satoshi, why the true believer tithes Bitcoin. So for me, I see Bitcoin as a, as a charity. So, uh, you know, people go to Greenpeace and donate their money, you know, to, to further, you know, whatever Greenpeace uh, is, is doing these days, people donate to the, to the Red Cross, uh, you know, you know, who do you donate to if you want to end fiat? Like, which charity do I go to to further that cause? Uh, well, here's one for you, Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, as I was mentioning uh, to, to John on Rapid Fire the other day, uh, you know, Bitcoin is a form of, of righteous money. And if you're sick and tired of those evil capitalists and yada, 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 uh, Hop on in to the fight against evil money uh, just by buying yourself some good money. Uh, you, you don't have to use Bitcoin to use Bitcoin, if you get what I'm saying. Just buying and holding is using Bitcoin, uh, providing stability uh, to allow your charitable efforts uh, to impact people like the Venezuelans, uh, people in the rest of Latin America, Southeast Asia, India, Africa. Uh, so effectively, us as relatively rich Westerners, uh, it's on us to provide this uh, this price floor for them. So the people whose heartstrings I can pull on and explain the concept of Bitcoin being a charity, uh, I can get them to the step of buying and holding, uh, but I still do need to do quite a bit of hand holding in you know setting them up with with proper security and whatnot. Uh, they, they don't usually get the, you know, sovereignty uh, play and the like, but, you know, being, being a millennial myself, I know a lot of disaffected uh, uh, people that are just looking uh, for any outlet to try to bring down, uh, you know, the false church of, uh, of the Fed. <laughs> okay. Um... You know, I mean, there are billions of people. I myself, I mean, I, I'm, I never considered myself, um, I was never interested in religions, um, even though I, I went even to a Catholic uh, school, <laughs> uh, but I'm not, um, you know, a Catholic on paper. But anyway, what I'm, I'm trying to say is that there are billions of people who are religious. So um, I'm not a fan, you know, of religious dogma and indoctrination, but uh, I do believe there's a spiritual aspect. I mean, I would call myself, even consider myself spiritual because it's about knowledge, it's about science, it's about ethos and love and empathy. Um, uh, you know, the, the essence of life, the essence of, in, of human interaction and uh, knowledge and wisdom. Do you think that we can... Uh, as you know, as you've written all, you know, even this this beautiful article. Do you think we can we can um, somehow uh, reach people on a more spiritual level by making them understand, you know, what is what's the essence of Bitcoin? I mean, what what, what are we trying to achieve here in when it comes to um, you know uh, the spiritual? If I'm, I don't have any other word for that, but the spiritual aspect of Bitcoin. Yeah, I uh, I probably focus ninety percent on the spiritual, and uh, ten percent on uh, on everything else. Uh, simply, you know, the I don't know, maybe it's the it's the it's the circles I hang around with. Uh, you know, I I work in a in a very like I work in the construction industry. I wear you know steel cap boots. A lot of just you know regular people work, uh, people that just want to uh, go, you know, earn their wage, go home, see their kids, go to church on Sunday, uh, you know, honest, honest, fair living. And I can, I can reach these people very, very easily 
uh, when I talk about uh, both uh, spirituality and fairness. Uh, nobody understands fairness and inflation uh, better than a worker that has to uh, hang out on a jackhammer all day. Uh, so when you explain the concepts of uh, you know how they're effectively being robbed, uh, they they get it quite they get it quite quickly. So uh, so every audience needs a needs a different approach. And I found though uh, most people, even the ones that that recoil at the at the word religion, uh, can find humor in my religious analogies and and get where I'm coming from. And uh, back back to energy. Uh, once you can you can tie Bitcoin back to the to the universal capital E energy, uh, you know, uh, thanks to the the transitive property of algebra, you can also say that energy is nature, nature is life, life is Bitcoin, Bitcoin is energy, <laughs> Bitcoin is nature. So if you could understand nature and life and the way it is. Uh, Bitcoin will just uh, will uh, will unravel itself uh, and it show itself to you in its in its purest form. Um, I know you talked about you know the, your path to Bitcoin um, even in your la your last interviews, but do you want to like uh, recapitulate a little bit or or uh, tell my listeners what what was your path and what, what was sort of the enlighten enlightening moment when you you know for the first time understood what Bitcoin is about and what's, you know, what, what, what was the vision behind it for you? So I've always been a, a bleeding heart. I'm a, I became a, a civil engineer simply because I, I wanted to help people. Uh, you know, it's odd. People say, oh, yeah, if you want to help people, you know, become a doctor or something. Uh, but it was civil engineers that got rid of the plague uh, with urban sanitation, uh, not doctors. Uh, so uh, critical economic infrastructure, roads, bridges, tunnels, airports, and the like. That was uh, that was my my true passion, and and thought how I'd uh, uh, have have the greatest impact uh, on people. Now, when I started working in uh, in public private infrastructure, uh, you know the the sources and uses of funds were quite dubious. Uh, so I uh, I kind of quit uh, you know the infrastructure game or the private infrastructure game uh you know later on uh, uh took a took a one year career break went and did an mba in oxford and uh you know while while i was there i happened across bitcoin in uh, in mid 2013 uh now with my with my educational background and uh uh interest and background in politics and and economics uh i i really did understand the need for hard money. Uh, so as soon as I was done reading the abstract of the white paper, I'm like, this is it. This is, uh, this is the key. This is, uh, this is the fix and uh, the lifeboat for humanity. Um, that's amazing. Like, like it didn't take long to click in because, uh, uh -huh. because I'm a naturalist, because I believe that, uh, you know, in, in the Taoist principles, if, uh, if you don't submit to nature, uh, you are going to be overrun by nature. Yeah. Uh, you can build a dam, but eventually the river will find its way around the dam. Uh, and, and Bitcoin through its, through proof of work and it's tethering, well, I shouldn't use the word tether and it's, uh, it's unshakable fixed connection with energy. Uh, we've just said energy is life and energy is nature. Uh, and when you're messing around with the nature of money, which is Bitcoin, and uh, you try to try to stand up in front of it, you're going to have a bad time because nature always wins. Wow. Um, when, when you had that, uh, that comprehension, though, when, once you understood, did you, in the course of those events, did you, or, or, or maybe at that moment, did you see like a bigger picture? What is uh, beyond, uh, you know, the monetary economical uh, solution um, uh, to, to this, you know, insane system we have? Uh, did you see something more than that? I mean, this is, this is what, what fascinates me more because I see, you know, a future where we already have what I call the monetary root layering with Bitcoin. And then we won't, you know, maybe we won't be talking as much as, 
as as we do right now about Bitcoin because it's going to be like a prime nature of you know you talk about nature so it's it, it's going to become as we say like a second nature first nature of our thinking of our interaction of our you know emotions even and 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 um, ethos because um, I see a future where a lot of these control obsessive structures are going to dissolve. Uh, whether it be the patent system, the institutions, the corporations, you know, uh, we're going to have uh, a technologies unleashed that is beyond our comprehension or imagination. Do you know where I'm going with this? Yeah, yeah. So, so here's a thought exercise uh, for everyone listening, actually. For the next day or two, whenever you read the word Bitcoin on Twitter, uh, substitute it for the word nature. Okay, so patents, do they exist in nature? Yeah. How are they gonna exist in Bitcoin? Uh, so I, I, made a, I made a big point uh, the other day uh, with John that if it doesn't exist in nature, it cannot exist in Bitcoin. So for example, communism, does communism exist in nature? Like it, it doesn't, it's, it's dog eat dog, Darwinism, all of that kind of stuff, doesn't occur in nature, cannot, occur in Bitcoin because Bitcoin is tied to nature through proof of work and energy. So there always has to be natural outcomes. Uh, now a lot of hardcore economists and technologists will probably recoil at the simplicity of that statement. Uh, but you know, there's beauty in simplicity sometimes. I asked this question because, um, uh, cause I asked, um, uh, most of my, in, uh, you know, guests, uh, about this, the process of civilization or the comparison in, you know, in the Bitcoin stand by Safed and Amuz on page 96 to 98. And this is what, you know, makes me most excited uh, about the future um, on the monitor root layering or whatever on the roots of, of Bitcoin. Um, it's this comparison between the 19th and 20th century where Safed and, you know, uh, uh, cites a number of studies, you know, Jonathan Hübner, a possible declining trend for worldwide innovation, technological forecasting, social change, or Peter Thiel, zero to one versus one to many. And where he, you know, where he sort of elaborates uh, the original primary, uh, you know, original innovations happened actually in the 19th century on the gold standard. And the adaptation, improvement, optimization of a lot of technologies we have happened in the 20th century on, on easy money, fiat money, you know, debt money, uh, Keynesianism. So I want to have your take on that because um, because in the end of the day, why why Bitcoin? Because I mean, isn't the whole purpose of Bitcoin to be yes, you know, rich and wealthy, but also to be prosperous, to be in an evolutionary, uh, you know, process? I think Hoppe, the Austrian economist, called it a process of civilization, whatever he meant. But I interpret process of civilization. We're going to really into a paradigm shift uh, into every aspect we can think of. And I think this is a this is a, a, an aspect which I would love to talk more or would love to listen from more experts. And I even tried to get some of these t technologies on on my show, but uh, um, until now I haven't had much luck. So, um, so uh, I see a civilization, a human civilization, a truly human civilization, where we're going to have so much freedom, so much abundance, so much, uh, you know, scientific technological evolution that we can't even uh, imagine in the very near future. I mean, I'm not, I'm not talking about hundreds or 200 years, even though I think we've lost already hundred years of, of scientific technological, pro, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, advancements and evolution. But you, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, so I, I can see a similar thing, uh, but but for me, the, for a, for a bull market uh, to to move, uh, you have to have a bear, you have to have a flushing out, and I think unfortunately, uh, very dark and pessim pessimistic thing to say, uh, but we've been standing up against nature for a very very long time, uh, so uh, there will have to be a natural reckoning. Now, what I mean by standing up against nature. In nature, can you create something out of nothing? 
Not really. No, yeah. you can't. So how are you going to create money out of nothing? It's against nature. So if you fight nature, you're going to have a bad time. So what I mean by, by natural uh, reckoning, when this economic bust hits us, right? In the West, it's gonna, it's gonna hit us hard, uh, you know, possibly cause even some form of, of social collapse as, uh, you, know, you know, big job losses, you know, desperation, all of that kind of stuff. That's the West. Uh, what do you think is gonna happen to societies in Africa when the global economy goes belly under or Latin America or Southeast Asia? Uh, economies that just simply uh, cannot take such a hit uh what happens there i can't promise you that their uh, their countries won't devolve into into civil war over over things like uh, uh, famine and and whatnot uh you know we we it's not like we haven't seen it before in history uh, but now we're just playing on a scale of eight billion people uh but with that said we have the lifeboat so uh, so come what may if uh, if you've stacked sats uh, you should be able to find uh, some salvation uh, you know going back to my uh, religion analogies and i'll be clear these are just analogies and and stuff done for a bit of uh, light-hearted humor and whatnot uh, but you know uh, most religions have a uh, have a day of reckoning a judgment day and uh, and a hereafter where there's uh, where there's heaven and hell uh, i view you know judgment day being that you know uh, that repeat uh, lehman brothers day where all it took was one bank to go up and all of the dominoes fell uh, i think uh, the next domino will be a bigger one and i think uh, the next one uh, might be might be the the the, the death knell so you could almost view that as judgment day. So post judgment day, you've got heaven and you've got hell. Uh, those that have been stacking sats for their salvation will be, you know, given heaven in the hyper Bitcoinized world. And, uh, and those who haven't will unfortunately uh, uh, go through a bit of hell. So I don't like, I don't see how there's a soft landing for 8 billion people. Uh, but this is, but this is, you know, my mission uh, to evangelize and save as many people as possible. Like it isn't about me uh, getting richer or making Bitcoin. It's about making sure everyone has Bitcoin so that we have a soft landing and that I don't have to, you know, live in a dystopia uh, with armed guards, uh, you know, for 20 years until things blow over. Like not a good outcome. We shouldn't be, uh, you know, praying for the economic apocalypse. Mm -hmm. So the key is. Yeah, I know. Not very uplifting. <laughs> <laughs> not today. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, like you know, as a as a logical sort of conclusion, uh, you know, what happens during this economic Armageddon, uh, especially to the to the uh, extremely disadvantaged and uh, and poor around the world. So it's uh so it's there's you know several hypotheticals uh, that can play out, uh, but the, the more the more little guys get into Bitcoin, uh, the better. That's why I don't uh, necessarily uh, get too excited about an ETF. Uh, the the longer we can keep the Wall Street finance bros away from this thing, uh, the better the future of humanity will look like. So I'm hoping the the wealthiest and most destructive of the of the finance bros remain no coiners, uh, and uh, particularly uh, no coiners because they have a special place in uh, in hell in the hyper Bitcoinized hereafter. <laughs> okay, um, but do you think that a lot of wealthy people, either you know secretly or you know inconspicuously, are already you know started hoarding um bitcoin uh family offices high ultra what do you call them ultra net uh, uh yeah unhw ultra high net worth uh look it's hard to say uh, at at current prices we probably need 15 million uh dollars of net investment 
uh, entering the game every day to keep the price at eight thousand uh, dollars. So it really is an extremely extremely small amount of money. It's something like only a couple of billion a year, like seven or eight billion dollars worth of yearly investment. So uh, nothing really in the scheme of things. So that's why uh, it doesn't lead me to believe that there's too many high, ultra high net worth individuals and, and, and family family offices there. So if you're all over to my medium page, I, I wrote an article about wealth and income inequality uh, and the amount of wealth at the, at the top end of the population is, is something like disgusting. And uh, if these people were to put 1% of their money into Bitcoin, uh, you know, it'd already be worth a couple of hundred thousand dollars. Right. There we go. The Bitcoin bell curve. So that's, uh, so that's where I, so in this article, I can make you even feel sorry for people that have $50 million. Uh, that's how disgusting uh, the global wealth pyramids are. Wow. So yeah, as, as you can see, uh, you know, they, they, they bundle, they, uh, they bundle people in. Uh, so you can see like a lot of tax brackets. So at the very, very, very top of the pyramid, you see people that have more than a million bucks. And it makes people with a million dollars seem like uh, super evil monopoly men, mustache twirling, uh, you know, villains. But if you scroll down a bit more, like you, you start feeling like uh, you start feeling bad for people that only have one to five million dollars. <laughs> And then you look at the top of that pyramid and it's people with over 50 million. And if you go down one more pyramid, you'll start feeling bad for people that have 50 million. Uh, and then you have the 1 billion plus. And if you go into that pyramid, you'll start feeling bad for the people that only have 1 billion. Uh, so the amount of wealth available in the world is, is disgusting. Uh, so at a price of $8,000, I can almost guarantee you that uh, no one with a with a lot of money has bothered to look at Bitcoin yet, because mm -hmm. there is there is a lot of wealth, three hundred and seventeen trillion. Wow. So that means if you sort of add up the whatever the real estate is what uh, two hundred fifty two hundred seventy trillion or something like that two hundred. Um, like, do you count the real, like everything, like monetary base? Uh, yeah. Real so the reason I count everything because I believe one day real estate will just be valued in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So I can, uh, you know, I can see it in a hundred years or so. Uh, you know, being the universal uh, unit of account as well. But but for now, uh, the amount of uh, you know uh, just general general assets. I know they're not all liquid assets, so they can't be transferred immediately into Bitcoin, but there are enough assets to cover, you know, a six billion, seven billion dollar yearly uh, net inflow requirement. Now, um, as I said a couple of times, we should be grateful that uh, these processes are accelerating with, uh, you know, all this insanity with quantitative easing, negative interest rate policies, uh, the debt fueling, I mean, if we, I think, add up all the debts with the unfunded liabilities globally, uh, it's not only like 270 or t something like that, 270 trillion, but uh, if you add all the unfunded liabilities, it's just a number, but I think you get something like a number of uh, 1.8 quadrillion um, global debt uh, with derivatives and unfunded liabilities. So uh, maybe we should be grateful if these things, uh, uh, you know, are accelerating actually. And um, this all helps, the, all these processes helps uh, the, you know, the, the, the hyper Bitcoinization. Um, wouldn't you say so? Uh, yeah, definitely. Because uh, eventually this, uh, like eventually this, uh, this totem pole is going to collapse like there's there's no way you can keep printing money ad infinitum uh, violating the rules of nature standing up against nature <clears throat> and not expecting a slap down from nature uh, so i i do believe this tower will collapse and uh, uh, i don't know if that'll spur an a, a immediate hyper bitcoinization but i think it will push a lot of people to at least uh, open their mind 
uh, to the idea of a, a non-centrally controlled, unconfiscatable, uncensorable uh, money. Mm -hmm. The experts who I've done interviews with, with um, uh, Dr. Marcus Kral or uh, Dr. Torsten Polite, these are real, I mean, uh, uh, high, you know, uh, extremely knowledgeable people when it comes to, you know, the monetary system and Austrian economics and uh, the whole debt uh, uh, fueled system. And one of them said uh, he had already predicted that um, he had actually predicted the, the mass firing, sort of the, the the mass firing of the employees of, of the Deutsche Bank uh, one or two months before that. And now he's saying that the recession could as late as end of 2020. So Q4, something end of Q4 of 2020 could be reality, the recession Europe. And that, you know, the, the European banks could, you know, uh, realistically collapse um i mean if that happens do, do you have a scenario for yourself i mean do, or can you what's what's your thoughts on that uh, like the chain reaction globally look uh uh not a not a macro economist so i'll probably defer back to those guys uh, but a bank a bank collapsing is never a good thing so i'll give you a couple of scenarios right so I have a mortgage and in Australia and several European banks go under. The Aussie banks get scared of a credit crunch and they call in my mortgage. So to use round numbers over here, let's say uh, I've got a million dollar property and I've uh, paid off half the mortgage. So I've got, you know, $500,000 to come up with out of nowhere because the bank has called in uh, their loan, which uh, they have full right to do. They put that in the contract and you can't tell them to take that clause out of the contract. So I'm going to have to sell my house uh, to get 500 grand for the bank. But if everyone is having their loan called in, uh, my million dollar house won't be worth a million dollars anymore. So I'll lose everything trying to cover, you know, the called in loan from the bank. So like disasters can happen all over the world. And, uh, you know, I can't, I can't predict, uh, uh, you know, what can happen uh, other than I know a lot of uh, people uh, are going to take a big hit to their pension, uh, to their pension money, uh, you know, just as was the case internationally uh, in 08. Uh, but yeah, I, I actually prefer to not think about these scenarios and uh and focus uh focus on salvation because this because i don't i don't see a, a positive uh way that these uh these scenarios can play out and be mitigated like it's all pretty bad news when a when a bank goes you know bankrupt do you do you do you feel that a lot of you know older people are already you know retired and uh, are in, on a pension fund um, wouldn't they self-responsibly have, have, do you think a lot of people haven't already woken up to that, to this, to this reality and, you know, and maybe even, uh, you know, make a really tough decision. It's like, Hey, you know what, I'm, I want to take out all the money I have and put it somewhere now besides gold. And I don't know what, what is, whatever is conservative and a, a certain percentage into, into Bitcoin. Do you think this is, this is about to happen or is already starting? Uh, starting to happen i'm uh, i'm hoping that it's about to happen i know a couple of people uh, about to retire uh, now i uh, planted the seed about five years ago and uh, now now coming back to harvest mm -hmm. so the more so one of them's a, a you know a ceo chartered chartered civil engineer colonel in the australian army corps of engineers the, the other is the cfo you know, of a, of a, of a public private motorway. So these, these two people are, are quite sharp. Uh, so they got it. And uh, five years later, they're now willing to dip their toe in. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know about the ones that, you know, don't have multiple university degrees and have worked on the, on the, at the high end of town in, in finance circles and whatnot. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, you can you can give uh, you can give people the message of salvation 
until you until you're blue in the face uh you can you can show them the door but they have to walk through and people for some reason or another just just have too much uh too much trust uh, for governments and i think uh, especially people in the west if uh, if they haven't you know lived in the quote unquote east uh they'll never ever get bitcoin yeah uh, so me i went to i went to high school or rather you know uh, became uh, matured to the world went through puberty and adolescence uh, in lebanon and uh, was there for about 5 years and i think that experience of living there for 5 years is what made the it is what gave me the instant click moment after reading the abstract of the white paper yeah that's so, so essential if so if, so if you've lived in a shit whole country mm -hmm. uh like bitcoin is a instant click uh, but if you're out in the west it's it's much harder to get and that's why you find in the west there's a lot more enthusiasm about the about the tech and the tech build out uh, simply mm -hmm. because that's what they know and they haven't really had to suffer through living in a shit hole country they may have uh, went to one on a holiday and uh, to be fair shitcoin or not shitcoin sorry shithole and shitcoin shithole countries are the best place uh, to take holidays uh, because everything's cheap the people are super nice and hospitable uh, but they're just a victim of their circumstances where the where the root cause of their problems is their government everyone hates their government no one trusts their government but they have uh, no no chance or choice of escape uh, so for people like them bitcoin instant click mm -hmm. so uh so people in the west may never get it simply just because they trust their government too much yeah um, you you're spot on with that because people in the western so called western developed nations or in europe or whatever or even here in austria um people are too comfortable i mean it's just People don't know what it's like. I mean, I myself come from, uh, originally from Iran. I, my father already died last year, but when he came with me, in, uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, thank you. Uh, when he came here with me to Austria in 79, you know, the revolution uh, was in 79, 1979. And within, you know, a shortest time, he, he lost a lot of money, uh, which he had, but wherever in his bank account, the savings, it was just gone, evaporated. <laughs> so once you experience these things i think it teaches you a lot of lessons and, and and wisdom and people over here you know i empathize with them why should they care i mean you know they the, the first excuse they have or the first argument they have is that you know why do i need bitcoin i can pay my with my coffee with whatever with my atm card or credit card or cash or it's still a relatively stable so called non volatile currency so the pain is not there yet. And I wish sometimes people would just experience the pain, such as Turkey, Venezuela, Iran, Argentina, Zimbabwe, where there's, you know, conditions of inflation, hyperinflation, fear, uh, existential fear. And uh, people don't have that yet. And I think it, the time will come and that will be the tipping point for people to wake up. Hopefully, hopefully by then it's not too late. Uh, but... <laughs> You'd have to be crazy now in uh, in Europe if you can't already hear the system starting starting to creak. Uh, but again, uh, Bitcoin is is threatening to uh, to a lot of is, uh, a lot of uh, established institutions. Like uh, Bitcoin is extremely dangerous uh, to the establishment. Uh, so I I firmly and sincerely believe that they, or at least the the, the establishment. Uh, media machines will not let the message of bitcoin reach the public mm -hmm. uh, it has to be uh, organic uh, mm -hmm. if uh, if there is going to be media coverage on bitcoin to get it out to the masses it will be negative coverage i can uh, i can almost assure you uh, so uh, you know people that say you shouldn't be proselytizing with bitcoin and just keep your mouth shut and maintain opsec uh, I think they've uh, they've probably got to up uh, their goal of 6.15 BTC because they're they're probably going to need security guards that carry RPGs uh, if the message doesn't get out. Okay. Um, 
we talked um, sometimes with Eric Vosquel about the black market, you know, and what's the essence of Bitcoin separation of state or state government nation versus money, you know, I mean, that's the whole point of Bitcoin. But also uh, I said, what, you know, what would happen if just one small or bigger country such as Iran, you know, would all of a sudden, uh, you know, uh, at least a, a substantial majority of the population of the 80 million, 80 million people live in Iran. And I could imagine that Iran could be one of those countries where there's, um, could be one of the first countries to adopt uh, Bitcoin as, uh, you know, as a black market. I mean, this this is what's going to end end like. I think this is this is the ultimate goal, like to create a massive black market all over the world. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, good, <laughs> because any any country with any right mind will say we can't let Iran be the only country doing this. And then they'll get in. And then once the second country gets in, the third country will say, we can't let, you know, only Iran and these other guys have Bitcoin. Exactly. We mm -hmm. need to get in. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, uh, mass adoption uh, breeds additional, or rather adoption breeds adoption uh, because uh, number go up. Uh, yeah. the, more, the more adoption you have. Uh, so it's a, it's a virtuous circle and, you know, as Michael Goldstein would say, everybody is scamming you for your Bitcoins. Everyone's a scammer. Everyone's <laughs> after your Bitcoin. Because uh, at the end of the day, once you have that Zen moment, the only thing that matters in life is uh, is stacking sats for salvation. Yeah. And, you know, the conditions in Iran or wherever, you know, any other countries uh, such as Venezuela, Tur Turkey, Iran. Or... Even, even Lebanon now, they're, they're, yeah. the, the peg is starting to slip and, and uh, they're afraid it's going to collapse altogether. Uh, wow. So extreme, wow. extreme economic tension uh, now in Lebanon, uh, creaking very hard. And, uh, you know, I went, I went to high school there, like I was saying. I don't have any friends in Lebanon. No one lives there. They're either in the you know, UAE or England, France, America, can nobody lives in Lebanon. And my friends that still live there, the very few don't have jobs. Uh, not for a lack of want, there's just no jobs. The economy is a disaster. 85% uh, of women are single, uh, just simply because uh, uh, no one can afford uh, getting married and, and raising a family. And all the men have left anyway uh, to work overseas. Incredible. Uh, so I'm telling you, there's like Lebanon isn't a isn't a unique case. Like there are there are literal billions of people living under identical circumstances. Uh, so you know, Europeans, Aussies, uh, North Americans, like we just don't get it. Uh, that's why I love the little Bitcoin book so 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 much uh, because it it sums up. The, the human element, the spiritual element, uh, so cleanly in a, in a neat little package. Very quick read. I think I got through it in two hours. I haven't finished it yet. Yeah, great. I go read this one. Um, so yeah, these are the people you know who already ex who have already experienced pain, suffering, which makes you actually creative. You know, I always say you know all these countries. Uh, wherever that is, Iran or Lebanon, I think people become creative um, or, or, you know, out of that, that pain, that, that necessity, um, people become creative and, and people, uh, you know, start understanding and they know what it's like, they feel it. So, um, and then, you know, after years and decades of sanctions, embargoes, exhaustion, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, I wish I wish some you know people over here in in Western or developed nations would sometimes know what it's like. Then they would understand you know the not only the potential for of Bitcoin, but but why why do we need a transformation uh, and not just a cosmetic thing for the monetary system? <laughs> it's it's almost as everyone uh, was sleeping through history class. It's a, uh, it's quite a shame because especially Europe, like the, the Berlin wall didn't come down that long ago. Has everyone forgot about communism and socialism Wow. and, yeah. uh, and state control and all that kind of stuff. Like it didn't take uh, everyone very long to forget about all that stuff. Uh, but I know the, the oldies around Eastern Europe, 
uh, most definitely still uh, uh, a wary, a wary of government. Uh, but we've lost the kids. Uh, they find socialism and communism uh, to be a very romantic concept, and uh, and I can't blame them uh, because we have socialism uh, for the rich uh, at the moment with things like the Cantlin effect uh, in in full display, but. You know, I just wish, uh, you know, I could I could show them the light uh, uh, that all you have to do is is stack sats, and uh, and and your your problems will effectively be solved. No need for socialism, no need for communism, no need to trust your governments. Just uh, just stack sats. Now, uh, Raoul Pal uh, made a great 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 comment. I think uh, I think it was also on John's. Uh, podcast on rapid fire could be mistaken he's been on a lot of podcasts now i had him on i had him that, too i had him on too yeah uh, yeah, yeah. so yeah. uh so he said uh you know he was asked you know what happens uh you know what if government doesn't let bitcoin happen <laughs> and then he said well what happens if bitcoin doesn't let government let, happen exactly yeah. <laughs> so uh you know i loved i loved 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 that and uh, the idea of, of stacking sats, uh, you know, these disaffected youths stacking sats, uh, that's literally, uh, you know, Bitcoin not letting government happen. So are you a fan of, uh, what do you call it, cost dollar averaging, dollar cost averaging? Um, oh, yeah. I, had, yeah, I had yeah. a hard time understanding the, the, the definition because I always thought you, you, you select a time frame um, uh, and then you you buy that was sort of my assumption from the beginning because I didn't understand what it was about you know um, so you don't like let a system or somebody uh, you know uh, select a, a, a specific point of time where uh, you know you buy some satoshis or Bitcoin whatever um, but you 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 select a time frame within a larger time frame. For example, you know, until a few days ago, just for a, a practical example, until a few days ago, or until yesterday, or the day before yesterday, the Bitcoin price was. I'm sorry, I, I only have the euro price in my head. Was like even uh, down to seven thousand fifty euro, and I'm like, ooh, you know, what if I had, you know, what if I had uh, the opportunity to exactly at that at that moment. Or in that time frame, uh, buy a little bit of Satoshi uh, in you know in, at that rate at at seven thousand fifty euro you know instead of seven thousand five hundred now today. Yeah, so this is uh, this is how I do it. So I've got two things set up. So I'll I'll just give the the listeners a quick recap on uh, on the concept of uh, DCA. It's basically sticking religiously, like a tie. Uh, committing uh, a fixed fiat dollar amount at a fixed interval. So let's say every Monday, 9 a.m., I'm going to buy 50 bucks of Bitcoin, no matter what the price, mm -hmm. and just religiously stick to that. So uh, like you said, there's a lot of buy side psychology. Right, you see the price drop today. You say, you know what? Maybe I'll wait till tomorrow to be cheaper. Mm -hmm. What if it's not cheaper? Mm -hmm. So this is why, personally, I call exchanges the enemy of the people, uh, because they all let you gamble shit coins on a hundred x uh, leverage, uh, but none of them provide an automatic DCA feature for one reason or another. So I've got two two means of buying Bitcoin. So uh, now that uh, Amber. Is available in Australia. Godsend company. Mm -hmm. I stack daily. Yeah, uh, shout Alex out to Vetsky. Alex Vetsky and uh, and Amber. So on Amber, I stack daily. Uh, so I've got a uh, uh, daily daily recurring order. Uh, let's call it. Let's call that amount fixed amount X. So and Amber gets uh, seventy percent of my weekly. DCA budget. The other 30% of my budget goes to exchange and I place limit orders at 2% discount to market, 5% discount, 10% discount, 15% discount. And uh, I use that as my alarm clock. 
So if there's like a, if there's a big dip, I'll just start getting emails. Your limit order has been executed. Uh, so I'm like, oh, you beauty. So depending on how, how hard the dip is, uh, so I, I was investing X dollars per day, depending on how the, how hard the dip is on that particular day, I'll either invest somewhere between three X to five X, depending on how hard the dip is. Uh, so the, so the other week when we saw the, the big, you know, 15% dip in a day, I had all of my old limit orders that had been sitting there from August. Uh, plus I did a, I did a five X uh, purchase that day on top of my daily spends. So regardless of the price, I'm in every day. And whenever there's a dip, I'm aggressive. Even if it's going to dip further, I don't care if I had a 10% dip on Monday, I'll put in, you know, five X dollars. And then if it dipped 10% on Tuesday, well, that's a five X dollars day as well. Uh, and it's slow and steady. And uh, I don't feel burned, uh, you know, if it drops 10%, because in the scheme of things, it's like, it's not that much money. Uh, but if you were to go all in and the price were to drop 10, 15% on you, it could feel like a disaster. Mm -hmm. Got it. So for me, DCA, the only way, and uh, depending on uh, depending on your you know financial state, how comfortable you are, and uh, you know what risk profile you're you're, you're happy uh, to take, uh, I aggressively I aggressively buy dips uh, compared to uh, my usual regular daily buy amount. So you'll find at you know the end of the year, uh, seventy percent of my buying budget would have went to DCA and 30% of my buying budget, uh, two dips. So you have multiple limit orders or what do you call it? Um, on yeah. the exchange. so limit orders. So I set them, you know, because mm -hmm. there's always flash crashes, mm -hmm. like the price will drop 10% for two hours. And exactly. Then, you know, yeah. come back up. And if you don't have limit orders, you know, you will, you will never have caught it. Uh, yep. and, and you know, sometimes the, the price can stay low or several hours or several days. And because I don't check the price daily, uh, I rely on these limit orders to act as like an alarm clock for me, uh, to, to point me in the direction of a good dip. Mm -hmm. But yeah, not financial advice, not financial so, uh, advice. Yeah, it is what it is. That's just my approach. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend, uh, the new to the newbies, um, is it really at this stage, especially when someone's just onboarded uh, to, I mean, besides the, a hardware wallet, that's, 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 that's a must have, um, uh, whether it's a treasure or whatever, um, to have a full node, is that really necessary at, in this stage? Well, I mean, you know, of course, the, the ultimate goal is to become a fully f sovereign, fully validating uh, Bitcoin hodler. But yeah, so, uh, oh, so many people are gonna recoil at what I'm about to say. <laughs> Go ahead. So a lot of the people I've onboarded recently, I've mm -hmm. onboarded them all through Amber. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to throw out like numbers here that are going to sound like ludicrous, like ludicrous amounts, uh, but they're not that much in Australia. So these numbers are all in Australian dollars. I recommend that you know people get a, a weekly recurring going, you know, 50 bucks a week you know, which is nothing. So average, average income in Australia is 1500 bucks a week. So if you can't find 50 bucks a week, like you're struggling. Uh, and I even tell them, don't worry about storing them, nothing until you've got about a thousand bucks worth. Mm -hmm. When you've got about a thousand bucks worth, give us a call and I'll, I'll walk you through some like security. Once Only they get to the, Hardware wallet or, get, or yeah, hardware wallet. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then I, I actually recommend Casa Silver to them, which is mobile key only seedless. Uh, but you know, that'll have uh, a two of three hardware multi sig very soon. And then I tell them as soon as they're uh, securing uh, 10 to 15 grand worth of Bitcoin, 
fork out on Casa Gold, get a full plug and play node and, and two or three multi-sig. In the, in the bull run, when that, you know, 10 grand becomes 100 grand, either learn how to use, uh, you know, uh, Electrum personal server and, and get yourself uh, three cold cards. Uh, or you can just upgrade uh, to something like uh, Casa Platinum. And, you know, when it goes to a million bucks, you can, uh, you know, go to Casa Diamond and, uh, you know, do family planning and all that kind of stuff. Now, I just use the brand and the company Casa as a, as a placeholder name. Yeah. You'll, fi you'll, you'll find in part four of, uh, uh, or maybe part five of uh, my Medium series, uh, uh, an article called Perfect Competition and Managerial Economics. Uh, eventually, due to the nature of competition in Bitcoin and, and free open source software and, and whatnot, uh, margins will go to zero. And, and you'll find offerings, for example, like, uh, you know, Casa Diamond, which is five grand a year, uh, start getting offered for two grand a year. You know, Casa Gold, which is 300 a year, start getting offered for like a hundred bucks a year. Uh, you know, there will be competitors that come out with, you know, different levels of, of, of difficulty and, and, uh, you know, obviously, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, unique sales propositions for, for different customer segments. Uh, so for somebody that's a, you know, 55, 60 year old, I'd recommend nothing but Casa. Uh, for a 20, 25 year old, I'd encourage them, you know, uh, get an old computer, uh, you know, learn how to learn a bit of Linux, learn a bit of Electrum personal server, fiddle around with the code, uh, you know, get cold cards, mix with Wasabi. Uh, there's, you know, different, you know, different customer segments uh, need different things. So it's a, it's another case of horses for courses. Everyone, uh, everyone will, will need their own individual strategy. Ideally, I like this, the 100% self-sovereignty model where, where you run a node uh, but not everyone not everyone needs that uh, at this stage uh, but once you're once you're guarding uh, a decent amount of money you know a bitcoin's worth uh, you gotta you know take things pretty seriously uh, but realistically if you've got four four five hundred bucks on an exchange in australia uh, with somebody everyone knows who's our mate we all know where he lives uh, you know, everything uh, is, is cold stored. Uh, like you're not going to worry too much about leaving four or 500 bucks on there. Uh, and then when you're, when you're ready. Uh, so, so not just that, if you've got 500 bucks worth of Bitcoin and you're about to fork out 150 bucks on a Trezor, like it's not worth it. Like you're putting down 25% of your wealth effectively on your, on your storage device. So that's why I say, you know, wait till you have like, you know, a thousand bucks, two thousand bucks worth uh, to make the hundred dollar Trezor worth it. But again, uh, this is just the, the, the crowd of people I'm onboarding. Uh, people that if they lost, uh, you know, five, six hundred bucks, it'd be painful, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. Like they'll make it back in a week. It's fine. Uh, but obviously this, uh, this advice uh, does not apply to the billions in uh, the quote unquote east yeah well you know i'm i'm I'm, a, I'm just concerned or i don't know i'm just a huge fan and advocate of of usability and uh, you know intuitive uh, usability and and you uh, you uh, you know uh, user interface user experience and then on top of that the costs and uh, i already contacted casa uh, you know regarding you know about but why, why this, uh, you know, the, the pretty high prices. And they said, you know, first of all, they do not, uh, they said they, uh, we do not currently sell the node as a standalone product without the membership. Uh, he's, then there, they said, we want you to experience the Casa node in combination with Keymaster, the best multi-signature key manager on the planet and Sats app, the easiest way to use Bitcoin and Lightning from your mobile phone. This significantly increases the bandwidth of your personal Bitcoin sovereignty. So yeah, there are definitely you know uh, obvious advantages and features and functions. I'm just yeah, saying. I'm, you know, a, I'm a I'm a yeah. Casa user and advocate, mm -hmm. uh, but just because mm -hmm. of the way markets work, 
uh, more competition is going to enter the space and that's yeah. just life and the way it is and that's evolution and in a in a competitive environment as cutthroat as uh, as as bitcoin thanks to you know the amount of uh, collaborators in the space people working for free passion projects you know it'll be impossible to stay in business uh, uh, unless you're either an innovation leader where you have the best stuff or a cost leader where you have the cheapest stuff and uh, i believe uh, you know uh, things will necessarily get cheaper now with casa i i think look their margins are extremely low in that in that first year uh, so the first year is you know 300 us dollars for gold uh, but if you were to go build your own node buy a trezor and buy a faraday bag it would probably run you 300 us dollars mm -hmm. uh, and you know then from there it's just uh, just a you know annual fee which again if you're guarding 10 15 20 50 thousand dollars uh and you're really scared of fucking something up <laughs> like 300 bucks per, per year us that's you know that's nothing. yeah that's nothing yeah and no, I'm just, and you know average because person. you know i i know a lot of people being in the building game like i know a lot of builders and most of these builders will sneeze at a million bucks but none of these guys are going to get on electoral personal server and make a three or five cold card multi-sig wallet they'd rather just pay you know, 1800 bucks a year and get Casa Platinum. Yeah. Like it's not much. Yeah. And if they're, and if they're guarding 10, 20 million and they have kids and all that kind of stuff, five grand a year for diamond, if they can be sure that their inheritance isn't going to be fucked up, uh, worth, worth paying. So it's, it really is, uh, horses for courses, uh, you know, level of technical competency, uh, a lot of people just uh, also want to look for someone to blame in case something goes wrong. Uh, you know, uh, people, some people just need that. There's no, there's no support. If you, if you're, you know, uh, building your own thing on Electrum, whereas if you're on one of the high end, you know, CASA memberships, you've got like 24 seven, you know, dedicated support. Cause uh, when it comes to money and you think you've fucked something up and there's millions at play, uh, it's nice to be able to pick up the phone and get some instant support. <laughs> yeah. But it, but again, there'll be several more companies offering these kinds of services. So either they'll have to differentiate with better products to keep selling it, you know, 5,000 bucks a year, or they're just going to have to drop their price. Yeah. They will have to, and, you know, especially and, uh, for the average person. Things, yeah, yeah, similar things with the with the other wealth tiers. Uh, but again, I do think Casa is geared uh, to the more, uh, you know, uh, time poor, mm -hmm. uh, money rich uh, uh, person that just uh, you know is anxious about fucking things up. Like uh, you know, if I lose my my trezor tomorrow, like it doesn't matter. Like Casa's got a key. Yeah. Well, you uh, said not uh, just that. It it takes me a while to get my my money out of Casa mm -hmm. uh, when they have a key because they you know because you know they've got protections in place. Maybe you've been kidnapped and tortured. They send a couple of emails over a couple of days that you have to you know, uh, you know make sure you you approve and then and then your money is eventually released. So it's a it's a it's a great system. Uh, for for only uh, three hundred bucks a year for for people guarding a good stash of Bitcoin. Yeah, and you mentioned competition now. Uh, Samurai uh, with the corporation model. Uh, yeah, came came out. So that's an ex so that's an expensive yeah. unit. Yeah, yeah. But again, yeah, in the scheme dollars. of things. Yeah. yeah, but but in the but in the scheme of things, uh, like if you don't have a computer already. Mm -hmm you will have to buy one to run all these things all right so let's say you get a you know cheap i don't know three four hundred dollar uh, computer to run all these things then go sit down and for 10 hours and learn how to configure a btc pay server then go sit down for 10 hours and figure out you know how to do a bitcoin node then go like people are time poor and the opportunity cost of learning how to do all this shit 
is heaps more than 850 bucks. Yeah. So you spend this 850 bucks, it's got plug and play Bitcoin, plug and play Lightning, plug and play BTC server, plug and play uh, Samurai, uh, plug and play Electrum X. Uh, so people that are time poor like me, uh, 850 bucks is nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, but not everybody has the luxury of, you know, living in the West, you know, yeah. uh, you know, being, you know, educated in great universities, worked great jobs, blah, 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 blah. Very, very extremely few people uh, have that luxury. Uh, but enough people in the West have that luxury uh, to buy the, 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 the dojo. Yeah. But there are, and, so, you know, uh, a lot of and, people in the West that cannot afford, whether it's Casa or, you know, because. Yeah, very true. Uh, but uh, Samurai is completely open source. Mm -hmm. And if you have an old computer, you just download Samurai and just run it on your computer. Uh, but, you know, if you, if you like red, you know, boxes, all that cool stuff, uh, can't be bothered, you know, running all that old shit on a computer that will have to turn on all day and keep it plugged into the power if you, if you want your, you know, your node to be useful. Uh, not just that, uh, a Raspberry Pi 4 doesn't really cost that much. And you can run all this probably on a Raspberry. Probably won't be the quickest thing in the world, uh, but a Raspberry 4 is uh, significantly quicker uh, than a Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, so there's so there's ways, uh, there's several ways uh, for people to do this cheaply, uh, thanks to the the free open source software culture of the of the Bitcoin community. Like, can you imagine this? A, a private company. Uh, in in you know in the old legacy world, giving away their recipe for the product, <laughs> just it doesn't happen. Right. Whereas in the Bitcoin world, unless you give away the recipe, no one will buy your product. Exactly. So if you if you look Weird. at the 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 the, the main like uh, and you know uh, uh, so the main products that have value added to them are the open source products. So because, you know, cold card is open source, people can have a look at the source and build cool shit, uh, you know, for cold card, build integrations for cold card. And, you know, this is one less expense that, you know, uh, the guys at CoinKite have to worry about. Uh, extremely, you know, extremely co collaborative environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, if you don't give away the source code, uh, uh, people aren't going to trust you, people aren't going to support you. So Amazing. it's it, it so I don't think it is a it is a cash grab. So so with the with the Dojo eight fifty, like having a look at the hardware that's in there, uh, two hard disks run in RAID, good processor, good RAM, all that kind of stuff. Like I really don't think they're making that much money on the box. Yeah, no, no, me neither. No, no, definitely no. They've they put so a lot of effort. So if you were to try effort. build that, if you yeah, if you were to try build that yourself, maybe you could get it done for 150 bucks cheaper 200 bucks cheaper but the yeah. amount of time you're gonna have to waste you know putting into it and all that like unless you can be bothered you know people like me can't be bothered i'd rather just get one off the shelf mm -hmm. wow so um <clears throat> has uh is there anything um maybe you haven't said in the last, uh, you know, a couple of interviews with Anita Posh or, 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 or John's um, where you want to share and uh, which, which complements uh, the other content? Uh, basically, I just, uh, just want to tell people to, to look into their hearts and souls uh, a bit more in, in conjunction uh, with their minds because the, the mind and the heart and the soul when put together can make some beautiful music and uh, we need a lot of we need a lot of beautiful music uh, with the uh, with the possible uh, pessimistic future about to play out so keep pulling those heartstrings because the heart is just as important uh, as as the mind and uh, 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 a lot a lot more people have the have easy accessibility to their heart as opposed to easy accessibility to their mind. So uh, plant your seeds through the heart where you can. Beautiful. Has, thank you so much. This is so much wisdom. I learned so much, um, my listeners too. Um, hope to, yeah, have you soon back and back uh, and, and talk to you soon and see you soon, hopefully in the next conference. 
and uh, keep up this uh, wonderful spirit you have and the wisdom that you're sharing. Thank you so much. Case be upon you, my friend. <laughs> Stack sets. <laughs> <laughs> Take care now. Take care, Haz. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Welcome to the podcast show by Kay Vandavani, The Total Connector, Total Bitcoin, Awesome Economics, the hardest and scarcest money ever created in human history, Bitcoin.